Today we're talking about the brand new features of Photoshop 2021, how to use them properly and when to use them. Here's how, play tape. And cut. Is it 2021 already? So Photoshop 2021, Ooh, love it when new software gets released. I should get out more often. Okay, follow me. So of course there are more than six new features in Photoshop 2021, but here are my top picks. And if you know some of them already, you can skip forward using the chapters. But first up, it's sky replacement. So I have a nice example of a seascape here. It has good light with these pools of sunlight on the beach and hitting the rocks in the foreground. And this one here too. However, the big area of sky is quite bland and distracting to the focus area, which is the rock in the foreground. So this image is a perfect candidate for a sky replacement. And the way we do that is by heading up to edit and then sky replacement. Then we simply wait for this panel to load. And right off the bat, it's replaced the original sky with this plain blue one. And you can see all the different options to choose from. So I'm gonna pick a random sky here. And this looks pretty bad because it doesn't really make sense with the rest of the image. That being late afternoon and the sky being clearly after sunset. But just to show you the great job that Photoshop's AI engine has done at masking the tree line and the cliff edge. And also this post here. It's pretty impressive stuff, but let's find something else. Again, this sky is unsuitable for this particular image, but I just wanted to show you the option to flip the sky which now makes slightly more sense with the direction of the sunlight, but I still think we can do better. Now I think the moody rain clouds work really well for this, but there's still a problem. The direction of the actual sunlight is coming from right to left, but in this sky, the sun is somewhere behind these clouds. So let's try and make this cloudy sky work. And now we're getting somewhere. With the move tool selected, we can move the sky about to see what looks best. And then finally, we can change the temperature of the sky to match the overall picture. So let's take a look at the before and after. So here's another image I took just a few hours later, just up from the beach. And again, it has a plain inky blue sky this time. But I'd like a more interesting sky to match the magentas and pinks in this image. So it's placed the previous sky that we used into the image, which is not really what we want. But let's just zoom in again to check the masking. That's a pretty good job. So now let's pick a suitable sky. This one looks really nice. And I'll just see if it looks better flipped over. Now I prefer this side because it defines the roofs on the right hand side and it has some nice separation. So in just a few clicks, we've gone from this to this. Pretty impressive. But let's throw something a bit more complicated at it. So here's a classic image of St. Paul's Cathedral. How does it handle these building reflections? So I'll choose a suitable sky. And right away, we can see if we move the sky around, it thinks the glass is a continuation of the sky and we've lost definition on the edge of the buildings. We can try using shift edge to bleed back some of the original image, but the AI can't deal with the complexities of this particular photograph. You can't win them all. Let's try one last example and then we'll move on. Here's an image I took of the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing in Washington DC last year. And clearly this sky is completely wrong. So this is a good start. But we can see lost information in the Washington Monument and the projection of Apollo 11. So firstly, we'll try shift edge again to bring back some of the detail. We also have an option to scale up the sky to suit your taste. But I'm pretty happy with how it looked before. And with a bit of manual masking using the pen tool, I can create a path around the monument, convert it to a selection, and then holding the Alt key to create an inverted layer mask. And voila, we have an epic moment with an epic backdrop. Another brilliant new feature in Photoshop 2021 is the skin smoothing filter, which we can find in filter, then neural filters. This opens up the work panel on the right. And if we check the skin smoothing button, Straight out of the box, we have some incredible results. And if we want to flip back and forth, we can use this handy preview button here. The sliders at the top here control the skin texture and overall smoothness. But for now, I'll bring back a little more texture in the skin and detail in her beauty spot. And of course, we can output put the changes to say a smart filter or bake it into the current layer. I prefer just a new layer. There is another funky new feature up here called Style Transfer, where you can experiment with some pop art. Feel free to explore that craziness. 
There are some neural filters that are still in the test phase or beta phase. One of them is called Smart Portrait. So let's see if we can make her smile. Hmm, a little weird. I mean, it's even magicked some teeth out of nowhere. It needs more testing, but interesting nevertheless. So let's just revert back and try another slightly more usable feature called hair thickness. And that's not too bad actually. So let's output this to a new layer and on closer inspection we need to mask out a few questionable areas like her earrings. So creating a layer mask and a soft black brush we can bring back some of those details in her nostrils and eyelashes and the brow just here. So this is not going to replace professional retouching but if you need a quick fix or you need to deliver something to a client this is a really valuable tool. So next up we have a new filter to colorize black and white images using the Neural Filters AI engine which again is in beta so far from perfect. As you can see it's missed a few areas and on my hand but let's say we want to add some color to her top here. If we click on the color tab to open up the color picker, choose a desired hue, then simply click the cursor on the area we want that purple. And that's done a fairly good job, but a touch of bleeding on the shoulders. And let's add some blue onto my shorts using the same process. This is fairly rudimentary at this stage, but we can expect some improvements in the future. So let's try another more complex image. So not a great outcome, over here we have the American flag, which granted is on its side, but the AI hasn't recognized this in the image. We can try focusing the color to see any improvements to the chosen colors, but as it stands, I think I prefer the black and white. Another massive leap forward is the selection tool and specifically refining hair, uh, one of my new favorite features. Here's one of my portraits and I've chosen this particular image because I want to see how it deals with out of focus hair. So let's choose the quick selection tool and then select subject. Now let's move into select and mask. In previous versions of Photoshop we would select the refine brush tool and manually paint around the hairline to make the selection. So let's just undo that because there is a much quicker and easier way. You'll notice a new button up here now called refine hair. So let's click that to see what happens. Add a layer mask onto a white background and that's not bad for just one click. We just need to restore this section here and bring back her shoulders a little bit. This is a huge time saver. So staying with this image, another cool feature of Photoshop 2021 is the makeup filter. I have a reference image open here and say I wanted to copy the girl's makeup and attribute it to our lovely portrait, head up to neural filters and then choose makeup transfer. Then simply choose the reference image we have open and let Photoshop do the work. Again, this is a bit rough around the edges, but being in beta, pretty impressive. Output this to a new layer, and with a mask and a soft black brush, we can soften those edges. Next up, we have Pattern Preview, which makes it infinitely easier to create seamless patterns. If we head up to View and then Pattern Preview, we now see an area around the canvas dimensions, which allows us to see and create seamless patterns. Individual elements can be moved around and the repeating pattern gets updated in real time. If we turn off pattern preview, this does not at all look like a seamless pattern. Then simply define the pattern and call it whatever you like. If we have a fresh document and we want to add that pattern, it will show up in your saved patterns and then scale to your taste. That's it team, thanks for watching. I've got some photography shoots to do and know where to do them. I think the new Photoshop's gonna come in very handy. Um, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you like all things photography and I'll see you next time.